Welcome back to episode 41 of the Shy Sports Weekly Podcast. We got a good show coming your way, folks. But first, as always, Kyle, Ty, how are we doing? Fellas, holy shit, what a weekend. We're living, boys. We're living. What, what a weekend. weekend. How what awesome weekend is football? football? How awesome is football? It's a perfect way to awesome. describe it. I was thinking on Saturday, uh, yes, yeah, Saturday night after the Packers Niners game. Like, what do people do who don't like sports? What do they do? Read, I guess. I don't know. Like, I was out sure. at a bar in Scottsdale watching that game, and I was just thinking, how how are you like not, how are you not entertained watching this? This is the best. As bad as the games were in the wild card weekend, that's how good these games were. How are you not just rocked up all weekend? You know, who said I wasn't? I know you were. <laughs> I was Scottsdale, Kyle. It was good. Fun. Feeling it. Let me guess what bar you <laughs> were at. It. Boondocks. On Friday. Yeah. Go for your heads, but we will plug Boondocks in Scottsdale. <laughs> Every time we can. Yeah, then we went to uh, Hot Chick right next door. <laughs> Same vibe. Very fun. I can't believe we haven't been there, actually. What were you out there for? Uh, Andy's bachelor party. Friend of the program. Oh, that's right. Recurring guest. Hell yeah. Shout out Andy. Let me tell you, it is so nice. The weather out there. I feel every morning out there. I mean, the three mornings I was out there just felt like a, a nice crisp fall day here. It was phenomenal. Then it just turns into a nice summer day. It's yeah. Heaven. That's you go outside felt. today. It's negative 50. Yeah. Last time we were out there, that's what it was like. It was like, you need a sweatshirt in the morning, but it's not freezing. And then by the middle of the day, it's like 75 degrees or like 80 degrees. You know what's That's dangerous true. about that, though, is I get too excited and I just start drinking like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah, overindulging. That's, That's my okay. ideal weather, but then in the summer, it gets way too fucking hot. All right, well, would you rather have extreme winters like how we have right now or have extreme summers like they have? I think winter. Then. <laughs> You'd I rather honestly, have the winters? I honestly think winters, too. Oh, I fucking God. hate the heat, dude. I hate the heat. I'll tell it you makes. Go- the extreme dry winters heat. here make summer that much better. It's a dry heat. Dry heat, I know. But even the summers here are great. 10 degrees, dude. They're pretty good. And with the, <laughs> the humidity, I'm not saying, like, yeah, it, it's awesome being in Chicago. Summertime shy, summer. dude. Ain't you ever heard the Kanye song? <laughs> Kanye's a dweeb. <laughs> make that the title of this episode. Kanye's a dweeb. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. No, I won't. Scratch I won't. that out. But anyways, you writing something down. <laughs> I know, scratch that shit. Uh, but no, it's a dry heat, so it's great. Let's get into number 41, right? We're on episode 41. Is that what you said? Yep. All right, you start because I have a bevy of numbers. Oh, what a fucking vocab word of the day. All right. I went to a bar <laughs> called Bevy this weekend also. <laughs> I literally thought about, I saw that name and I was like, I'm using that word on the pod. So not actually that impressive. <laughs> well, I'm going to start yeah, with that. Uh, I remembered. I'm going to start with, uh, a powerful, a big horse, big John Lackey. Oh, I thought you were going with my my Blackhawks pick there for a second. <laughs> John was Lackey was a guy that I always hated until the minute he put on a Cubs uniform. That's a that's a, actually like a fun fact. A trivia question is who like who did John Lester get his first career hit off of? It was John well, Lackey? I have a feeling I know the answer now. <laughs> I know, but aren't of, they? I mean, they're obviously punch. buddies too, right? Yeah, the best of friends. Is it weren't they? Was were, was it? Were both of them involved in the uh, beer and chicken yeah. thing in the Red Sox locker room? I'll, I'm gonna say yes. I obviously I know Lester was, but I'm not sure if Lackey. Was Lackey with, was there too, but I don't know about Lackey. I'm not sure if Lackey was with the Sox. He might have been with the Angels still at that time. It but just he, seems like they probably. <laughs> if he wasn't in the building, they definitely Facetime. They were <laughs> they were skyping him into that. <laughs> he was in LA. They were in Baltimore while it was all happening. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going number 41 on the Blackhawks, Jocelyn Tebow. Come on. What fucking name, dude. First name, Jocelyn. Jocelyn Tebow. Related to Tim? T- no, so it's T-H-I-B-A-U-L-T, T-Bolt, but it's pronounced like Tebow. Jocelyn Tebow. French, huh? I have actually no idea. That's a great question. Jocelyn Tebow. He was like a, he was a stud for a bit with the Hawks. Let's see here. Just celebrated a birthday. He's French Canadian. I know a few Jocelyn's, none that are male. None that have cocks. 
<laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Who can you? What can you tell me about Mike McNeil and Mark McNeil? Both forty-one for the Blackhawks. Mark related. McNeil. I don't know who Mike McNeil is. Mark McNeil played. I look it up. Click his uh his hockey reference page. I bet you he paid played one game, one career game in the NHL. I think he was a first round pick, like eighth overall. No, wow, eighth. he's completely bald. Yeah, I was about to say, and he's a bald prick. I don't know if he has like that. <laughs> he's a bald prick. I don't know if he has that disease like uh, Charlie Villanueva or not Charlie. Well, who's the Villanueva guy in? Yeah, Charlie Villanueva. Yeah, it was like alopecia. Is that what that's called? So this guy yeah, played you, one man. game, good word one game for the Blackhawks in fifteen sixteen, and then one game for the Stars in sixteen seventeen. Wow! I, so he played two career games. Yep. I didn't even even know about the second one. I didn't know about the, he played another game besides the Hawks. Well, <laughs> does it say what pick he was overall? Uh, 18th overall, first round in twenty eleven, right? Yep. Hell of a That's career. Fucking smart. You're good. What can I say? He's a ball prick. Um. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go number 41, Sweet Lou Pinella. Oh, wow. That's a great one. The skipper. Hate to say it, but that wouldn't have even crossed my mind. I it's know. a little, little, little out there thinking about coach numbers. I know. I, had, I have a number, another number 41 that I was going to go to. I'm, I know you're going to use them. I think you're going to use them for the Cubs, but I couldn't disrespect Lou by using that guy first. Sweet Lou. <laughs> I actually have a, a fun one for the Cubs. Billy Williams was not oh, Billy in 19, 1960. I don't even know if it was for a full season or what. Billy Williams, and, number 41. Seems like a Michael Jordan type story. They forgot his jersey. Well, yeah, maybe. When we when you looked up the Bulls numbers, like when it came to 12, did was Jordan on there for I know he played one game. Yeah, he was what 12 and 45, right? Yeah. Was, yeah, was he listed yeah. there? Yeah, he's listed. Gotcha. I'm going back to the cubby hole. Number 41, Tony Campana. Nice. Speed kills. I'm going to tweet from Marquis tomorrow. Who's the fastest cub alive? <laughs> How many Tony <laughs> Campanas do you think I'm going to get? A couple. <laughs> You'll get a couple. Will you tweet Tony Campana for me at least? Yeah. If no one else does, I'll fly in there. If nobody else does, I need, I need some backup here. I need some <laughs> air support. Some people Can are going to say you? Juan Pierre. Can I tell you how uncomfortable it made me that you said going back to the cubby hole? Didn't like it. Why? It sounded very odd. The cubby hole. I don't want you anywhere bottom. near my cubby hole. You're the and one who's a fact. You're the one who's dropping power bottoms left and right around here. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you just need to introduce the power bottom. <laughs> yeah, at the cubby hole. Introduce it to what? <laughs> to who? A bar called the cubby hole. <laughs> I would. I'd go there. Yeah. All right. For how about a how about a throwback number forty one? Brian Piccolo. <laughs> oh, I love Brian Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I don't even really know. I mean, it sounds stupid. I only know Brian Piccolo from Entourage, like where they're watching the Brian Piccolo's Brian song. Uh-huh. I, mean, I guess I know Brian's song, but I don't really know much about Brian Piccolo. Do you want to fill me in? I, I, I mean, I know he played running back for the Bears for four years. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you. Handling off stats. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> going to listen to this and be like, you guys are the biggest idiots on the planet. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> all right, I'm going number 41, Philip Umber. Perfect game, Philip Umber, right? Perfect game, Philip Umber. Thank you. Ty, you're the resident Sox fan here. It was, the, it was in 2012 he threw it. Ten years ago. Wow. Kind of just goes to show you that perfect games are just lightning in a bottle. I mean, how I many like perfect games the guys, have there been? Half the guys that have thrown perfect games are just not not household names. It'd be, it'd be an interesting stat to see, like, all the, the career wins and losses or the career yeah. wins of guys who have thrown perfect games, what the threshold is, because Philip Umber is definitely – he's. I, mean, I, be, think, I think of him, I think of Dallas Braden. A Mother's Day, yeah. Um, shit, I mean, there's like no more. When was the last perfect game? Uh, didn't did Roy Holiday throw one? Yep, he threw a no Randy hitter Johnson. in the playoffs. Oh yeah, Roy. Here, you're gonna laugh at this. Roy, I know these dates too. Roy Holiday was May 29th, 2010. Randy Johnson was May 18th, 2004. Why do you know these dates? 
So May 18th, 2004 <laughs> was the day we moved to Lamont. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that makes sense. And then, like Hernandez threw one. <laughs> Mark Burley. Burley threw one. June 20 or July 23rd, 09. And then like Matt Cain. I got to see Astros. Yeah, Moose did that. Ubaldo Jimenez. Remember that name? He threw a perfect game. I was going to say perfecto and a no-no. April 17th, 2000. Burley's Wells. Yeah, you ever, that's a, I don't know if that's a conspiracy theory or if it's just like a rumor or if it's the stone cold truth. Uh, the day he threw his perfect game, David Wells was violently hung over. Yeah, actually, I've heard that too. I mean, can you imagine if like I had to do anything like that? I can't even, I'd have a panic attack in the taxi on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> Try doing it when you're on fucking LSD, dude. Yeah, who I know is a, a or something. Guy. Doc Ellis, yeah. Doc, Doc Ellis. Ellis, yeah. He just threw a no hitter though. He like he walked yeah. like ten guys. He, yeah, he, he walked the world. Like six people. I mean, yeah. let's give him let's let's cut him some slack. What's even crazier is I mean, it was know, on I mean, LSD. How about the? I think Edwin Jackson threw a no hitter. Not that it's <laughs> anywhere. He wasn't on drugs allegedly, <laughs> but he had like nine walks. I think he threw hundred fifty something pitches. Can you fucking imagine doing that? No, that's nuts. Like. My God. All right. He's never been the same since. <laughs> Do you have a, a Bulls 41? Uh, Cameron Bearstow. Oh, I, I mean, I actually know the name. Yeah. I mean, he was like, I feel like he was like a center with like the long, goofy, uh, blooming onion hair. Yeah. Blooming um, onion hair. <laughs> and then... This is one that I saw that I just thought was a funny name. Cliff Pondexter. No idea who that is. I think Andy would like that one. <laughs> what uh, what years was he on the Bulls? 76 through 78. Oh, so he's not. Was there a Pond? I don't know if you would even know this. Was there a Pondexter that was on the Bulls recently? Mm, not that I could think of, no. And now it's talking Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, what else? Do you want to get into a couple on this days before we jump into football? Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we got uh, – when did we record last? What's the date? Today is the 24th, so ha oh, All right, two good Bears good ones. Two good Bears good ones. Jesus Christ, English. <laughs> it must be really good. Dash one. <laughs> uh, well, January 20th, 1982, the Bears hire the coach, Mike Dicka. <laughs> so would that be – 40 years ago. Oh, rough. Look at him just chomping on his gum, smoking cigars on the bus. He has a great head of hair. He might have top five, like, head of hair of all time. Yeah. Dude knows lettuce. <clears throat> Lost the mustache. It was just like a, a lethal combo. Ooh, that'd be a good starting five, just hair. Who has the but greatest I, hair? I, I met him one time. He farted. Uh, <laughs> he, he probably did. It was, that, it was like an autograph signing. And uh, I shook his hand, and my hand literally felt like a, a, a baby's hand. Like, he just has mitts for hands. Nice mitts. And he uh, he actually, you know that picture where he's flipping off the yeah, oh, yeah. The caskies or the reporter, I guess? But that's the, <laughs> picture, that's the picture that I had him sign. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, I bet you've never signed one of these. He's, he's, he's just like chuckles a little bit. He's like, I've signed plenty of these. That's probably the only picture he signs. <laughs> you look back, everybody has that exact same photo. Hey, coach, <laughs> nice mitts. Mike, Iron Mike. He's honestly, oh, fuck, how old is that guy? I don't know. He's got He's got to be right around 80 now, right? Let's see. I don't even want to look this up. He is 82. Yeah. All right, let's move on. January 21st, 2007. Can you guess what happened here, Ty? Oh seven. He has no idea. I'll I skip no the idea. I'll skip the drama for you. The Bears defeat the Saints in the NFC championship game to advance to the Super Bowl. The game was an absolute blowout, too. Yeah, but not it, they broke it open like <clears throat> late in the third quarter. Yeah. It wasn't a blowout the whole game. No. But I mean everyone was worried about it, rightfully so. Um Drew Brees, but I we had we had some bear weather that game, I think. I'm looking up the stats here. You think you can uh, you can guess the spread and the total on this one too? 
Um, Is there snow? Can you give me the seeds? One and two. Damn, all right. I'm going to go Bears minus three. <laughs> on the dot. Yep. And let's. what was the over-under? Point total, 44 30, and a half. 39 and a half. 43. Woo! Isn't it crazy? You can like get, you can guess these spreads, like to the fucking number, but you can't yeah, guess who's gonna win. <clears throat> to be honest, it's <laughs> not something I'm really proud of. <laughs> Holy shit! Can you uh, Rex Grossman's stat line in that game? Mm. Can you, <laughs> his completion percentage, for fuck's sake, ninety-two <laughs> percent. It's under fifty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He was 11 for 26, 144 yards, and a touchdown. They won. They made it to the Super Bowl in spite of him. They dragged his ass there. And that's with – it's 144 yards, and that's with a 33-yard touchdown pass to Bernard Marion. Jeez. That was like a circus catch. I'm not kidding. I wouldn't be surprised if the defense contributed to more points than Rex Grossman that year. Oh, yeah, 1,000%. Um, let's see. So, Tom, oh, geez, Thomas Jones had a day. Two toddies. He quote tweeted that tweet, by the way. It'd be really nice to get him on the pod. Friend of the program. I, I'm just going to say everyone that likes or follows anything we do is friend of the program. Uh, Cedric Benson, RIP. He had a toddy as well. Looking at the names in this game, it's crazy. Ottawale Agunlie, Mark Anderson, Tank Johnson, the other Adrian Peterson. like <laughs> The better Adrian Peterson. It's crazy. It is Robbie, crazy, but it, fuck, Robbie time, Gold was like, in that game. I, I, if there's yeah. a team that I remember well, it's that one. It wasn't the uh, the 2014 Trustman Bears. No, not that one. No. Oh. Like uh, for the for the Saints here, they had Reggie Bush, Drew Brees, probably Marcus Colston, Deuce McAllister. Oh my God! Um, Go fucking Go horn. Not not that I'm. Hold on. No, no, Johan. Not that he he didn't get any interceptions, at least. Was Colston on the team? Yeah. Scott Fujita. Like, just big names. Not the, <laughs> I say Scott Fujita and big names. <laughs> <laughs> just memorable names, I guess. Everyone knows Scott Fajitas. <laughs> Scotty Fajitas. This is a – Jesus, I forgot about this guy. Brendan Ayabadejo. Oh, yeah. And you have a brother named Obafemi. I don't know. Damn, I didn't know this guy was from Chicago either. Look at that. The more you know. Um, let's see. Let's move on. What's another on this day I have here? Oh, this is this is one that's up your alley, Max. January twenty second, twenty ten. Derek Rose puts Goran Dragic on an absolute fucking poster. That might have been Rose's best dunk. Down. <clears throat> yeah, that's his highlight dunk. I think I think you could say I mean he had some nasty ones, but you could pretty safe to say that's the coolest. Is this the same Drogic that's in the league right now? Uh yeah. He's been in the league that long. I believe so, yeah. Wow, those Suns jerseys are terrible. <laughs> those are like the I mean if I you think like about fashion, it, it's not it's not like he's been in the in like it's only ten years ago. Twelve years ago. Twelve. I mean Sad round, to say, but, but Rose should probably still be playing at a decently high level too. Yeah, but I mean, he, we'll he has we'll no need that part out though. I just <laughs> I thought Goran Dragic was younger, and that's all I was. I didn't know. I mean, he's in the league dunk, that long. That dunk point guards are not supposed to dunk like that. No, it's the best part, honest to God, is <laughs> once they cut to the bench and they're all doing the whole <laughs> back. Aaron Gray leading the bench mob. There's one guy <laughs> laying on the ground having a panic attack. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> oh, my God. It's this disgusting. Is... Brad Miller's in there. He's on the bench. Yeah, he is. Number 52. It honestly looked like he was going to hit his head on the backboard. Oh, man. Do you think that would, this would not be another good starting five? Athletes we wish never got injured. Like Derek Rose would have to be. That would right be a good there, starting right? five. I think we'd have to do a little research before that, but. Kevin White. <laughs> I was gonna, do you even know who Eric Lindros is? No. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say Eric Lindros and hockey. 
Um, let's see what else. Nothing more, nothing really big on the uh, the on this day front here. We'll have a couple big ones I know for next week, but let's move on. Divisional round football. Smell you later, Packers. Stinky cheese. <laughs> Robbie Gold dragging his huge fucking 10 pound balls all over Lambeau Field. And then at the end, just says, fuck the Packers. Thoughts. I mean, when Garoppolo threw that interception, um, not not even sure where like where it was at in the second half or how much time is left, but I was like, all right, that's it. Rogers is seconds left down. in the second half. Or first Rogers, half. Rogers is going to march down the field and take care of business here, and they're not going to look back. How about this? That Jimmy G's three and zero when he doesn't throw a touchdown pass in the postseason. <laughs> hey, Chicago kids do it different, dog. These Arlington Heights kids built different. I, I actually I don't know who tweeted it out, but I saw someone with that stat, and it just said he's built different. The best was uh, <laughs> was him and Robbie Gold after the game. Like, yeah, man, fuck the Packers. Did you not hear me just say that? No, I didn't. Did yeah. you say that? <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, I missed it too. Well, you're high as shit. <laughs> I don't know if you said that. <laughs> One million percent. Are you sure you said that? Are you yeah. sure? Check the tapes. I said it. We'll rewind it back. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. That was phenomenal. Another part of that video or of that that video, that last uh kick was the long snapper just sprinting down the field, chasing after the ball immediately after it goes through the uprights. Yeah, it's like me at Coachman sprinting down the fairway after Gary <laughs> nails a drive 300 yards. Smart of the long snapper, but also I'm wondering who flipped in the ball because at that point, I'm just keeping that ball until someone pays me to give it back. It's probably like a security guard or a stadium employee. He's I know, but if there's anything I've learned from – Anything like valuable footballs, yeah. From watching football, it's you hold on to the ball until someone literally pays you to take it. Is always try to get money in any situation, yeah. I mean, that ball is not going to be worth anywhere near as much as Brady's ball. If that's what no, but Robbie Gold like. might might want what, what, what if he's like, Yeah, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Well, sure, a <laughs> hundred like, bucks. Oh, that's great. I didn't even. They didn't think you were going to go that low. I mean, Max, give me a Max grand. Not shooting for the stars over here. He's living. Yeah, the only thing I've learned is to take the money. Yeah, I'll take would you rather, bucks. Would you rather have a hundred dollars or not have a hundred dollars? <laughs> hey, that's a good fucking point. No, I'm so, not. I, I right, listen. I guess you come out. I'll give you the win on this one. <laughs> You'll win this battle, but you're going to lose this war. <laughs> my, my answer no, is I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that that would have been my opening offer. <laughs> Robbie Gold's like, so all right, what do you want? Guy goes, hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get some. All right, if you're that money. guy and Robbie Gold asks you, what are you saying? Um, if he gives five, you a grand, if he gives you a grand, I was going to say, no say five taking. grand. Five grand. You're going to ask Robbie Gold for five grand. Yeah, and then see what he says. I'll tell you what, because I'm a team player, I would offer that he has to come on our podcast. It's all about the numbers. No, I wouldn't baby. do that. I wouldn't. All Robbie Gold numbers. seems. Like, I think he. I think he golfs. Maybe I'd ask for like. Actually, no. Because, like, then if you ask him for, like, a round of golf with him, that's just kind of awkward. Like, he might not want to do that. Why would, Why? Why the fuck would he? <laughs> right. I don't know if Robbie Gold's going to want to golf with me. <laughs> he, would, he would rather pay me five grand than not golf. With me. <laughs> There's times I would, too. <laughs> He's hey, like, confirmed. why the fuck would you say that? Just take the money. <laughs> he loves Robbie Gold loves Crystal Lake, Illinois, dude. He's always at Country Donuts. Is, Is he? he really? Yeah. Yeah, I think his kids like I think his kids like still, still live here. Go to school. Actually, yeah. He's I mean, he throws out a first pitch at every Cubs game or at every Cubs game, at a Cubs game every summer. It's just every Cubs game. It's honestly just piss poor on on the Bears part that he's not still playing for them. I mean, granted, in his last year he did he was kind of ass, but they Who still cut him. I'm gonna post a Robbie Gold highlight there in this while we're recording. What yeah. Robbie Gold highlight should I post? I just posted his his win against the to send the Bears to the championship game against the Seahawks. Uh, post something about when he had like the highest field goal percentage out of any kicker of all time. All right, but what highlight I'm saying? I don't know. I'll find one. All right, you find one. We'll uh, we'll keep moving out. Let's go to the second game there or the second Sunday game. Bills Chiefs. Was this the greatest game ever? So Until if, further notice, I think it might be. <laughs> like, unless you can point me to the greatest to a, playoff game ever. Unless I you can point me to a more exciting game than that one, I'm I'm with you. 
I mean, no, it's so many different emotions and that I'm sure for those fan bases there, my emotions, I was praying on that fourth and 13 that they got a first down or, I mean, I needed a touchdown for the over. If they don't get that, they don't get, the, they don't even get the over. Right. 26, 21, under 47 teasers hit around the world, <laughs> which was teasers hit killed. around the world. Yeah. I mean, teasers wouldn't have hit. I mean, folks would have been made a killing. Josh, Josh Allen finds Gabriel Davis for four Dude. fucking touchdowns. How about Gabriel Davis? Who the fuck is Gabriel Davis? <laughs> what do you think the odds were for four touchdowns on him? Fucking through them. Didn't moon. exist. Yeah, definitely Plus didn't 10, exist. Easy. I mean, it's like, come on. It was on. My main emotion was just shock for like the last quarter of the game. It, like, those are, I think, pretty clearly the two best offenses in the league right there. All right. If you're, if you're uh, Sean McDermott, 13 seconds left, are you not squibbing it there or po- pooching it? Yeah, you got to do something I other than fucking I mean, world. Are you giving him a touchback? Yeah, I, I can maybe understand the touchback, but don't drop into prevent defense and let them gain 25 yards on, on a, each play. So I have two thoughts off of that. One, the 13 seconds at the 25 yard line doesn't it remind you of the Bears and Falcons in like 08? So yeah, gave Matt Ryan nine seconds. Yeah, it does. At the 25, and he. He got in the field goal range and they kicked like a 58 yarder. It yeah. was brutal. Broke my heart. Yep. It was like week three. Second, <clears throat> secondly, Leslie Frazier is interviewing him to be a Bears head coach. No shot no. anymore. Please no. You're running a prevent, uh, keep him in the middle of the field defense when they have two fucking timeouts. Like, what, what are we doing here? When they have Travis Kelsey <laughs> and Tyreek, Tyreek Hill so fast. Oh He's my so God. God dude. Nature. Dude, that, fast. That's- that crossing route when he scored the touchdown that uh, that put them ahead, what like thirty three to twenty nine, and then mm-hmm. he just takes off up the field. He, I mean, he had to be going like twenty five miles an hour. Have you ever seen a uh, a guy give the peace sign to somebody who's in front of them? In front of them, <laughs> <laughs> so confident and cocky, and I love it. I mean, I that's I feel like in any other moment or any other game, maybe not postseason games, but. If he does that in a regular season game, that's a taunting penalty, right? Could have been there, too. Yeah, I don't know. Should have been, I guess. He's I mean, gotten it before for that. Well, that Cassius Marsh got a taunting penalty for looking at the sideline. Tyreek Hill's not going to get one for <laughs> putting the deuces. I don't, I don't know if he run. still wears this glove, but he used to wear a glove that, that was only black on his two fingers so that he didn't actually have to hold up the peace sign. he just hold up his hand. Oh, he yeah. Wasn't, he wasn't actually taunting, but it looked like he had the peace sign. It was the peace sign? Yeah. Well, that, that's even – that'd be even more ignorant if he was <laughs> running like this. That's a 30-yard that's a penalty <laughs> that's so for trying funny. to outsmart the refs. Yeah, that's dirty. But, no, that game was fucking crazy. I mean, imagine – imagine being a lot of things, but imagine being a, a Bills fan. Oh, heartbreak. That has to be one of the worst losses then, right? I mean, yeah. 13 seconds. Imagine being saw, fucking Josh Allen. I saw the Bills were – or pardon me, the Chiefs, after that last Bills touchdown with 13 seconds left, they were like plus 8,000 to yeah. win. I was like – remember, I kept – I was texting you guys back and forth. I was like sprinkle a little bit on the Chiefs because after the Bills, Gabriel Davis touchdown, the Chiefs were plus money. Yeah. It's like a minute 54 – that's way too much time. Then I said, oh my God. The Bills. And I said, sprinkle the Chiefs again. You were just hedging. Patrick Stop Mahomes playing. had like 175 yards passing after the two minute warning, <laughs> which is just stupid. <laughs> stupid numbers. My, my question for you guys is what do you think of the overtime rules? Like, obviously, a game like this, it's, it's the perfect time to talk about it. I, I mean, to be honest, I know people were pissed. I don't, I honestly don't mind them. My one thing that I heard today that I actually like that I, I would be in favor of, the only way that you could win on the opening drive is if you convert a two-point conversion after scoring a touchdown. Ooh. Mm. Like, if you kick the field goal, then at least the other team gets a chance. Yeah. I mean, I could – I'd be interested in that. But So what happens then if – So if you go for two and don't get it, then the game still goes on too. As, but if you kick an extra point, then – then the game, then the other team, like the Bills, would have gotten a, you know, they would return to kick, and then they'd have a chance to score a touchdown. But if they don't score, the game's over. 
And if then if they score a touchdown and kick a field goal, then it's just the normal rules. And you keep so playing, the next, yeah. The next score wins. Yeah. I don't hate that, actually. Don't hate it at all. A lot of thinking. A lot of thinking. I'm going to forget that. Don't you dare propose that to the NFL, though, because they won't listen because they're so much smarter than everyone else. If this they were so me. smart, they make better overtime rules to begin with. Like, I've, I've always been in the school of these overtime rules fucking suck. But at the same token, it's like that's what the rule is, and you got to fucking – you should have won the game in the first place. So, and I don't instance, think I don't, I don't think the NFL games. should have the same rules as college. I think that's right. No, no, I I don't. I mean, I like the college overtime rules, but I like it because it, it is college. You know, like I, I also like it because their field goal kickers suck. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, <laughs> poo poo. Yeah, here's, here's here's a good stat. So Mahomes, through including overtime, threw for 188 yards after the two minute warning. The Bears, <laughs> wait, this is terrible. The Bears threw for more than 188 yards only in eight games this season. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's like another question. It's like you're watching those two teams as a Bears fan. Just imagine how it would feel to have an offense like that in Chicago. Oh, my God. Like what? It's just like, like it'll never happen. I say it all the time as a Steelers fan. I'm like, you just watch these quarterbacks like Josh Allen and – fucking Mahomes actually passed the ball downfield at like 25 30 yard increments and shit and you're just like this is how it's supposed to be <laughs> right I don't literally know what that's like I've a, I have a good have you seen that meme like how it started and then how it's going on yeah. Twitter so verbal meme here how it started is the Bears tweeting out a picture of Andy Dalton with the caption QB1 and then how it's going is just this tweet how the Bears going through for 188 yards <laughs> in eight games <laughs> Oh God! Yes, fucking yeah. love it. I'm gonna have to do that. I saw that Robbie Gold's uh, charity of choice skyrocketed after he hit that field goal. Good. And it was like, like it was an overwhelming amount of Bears fans that contributed. Oh, I, I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> what do you? Not that you, not that you have like any idea. But what do you think Rogers is gonna end up doing? See. I, if I, if I had to guess my I initially, no <laughs> if you had to ask me, like if you asked me like three or four weeks ago, I was going to, I would say that he was going to Denver. Uh, I should ask, do you think he's staying in green Bay? I don't know. Like I, the thing that pisses me off about it is at the beginning of the season, he was like, this is it. Last dance. Fuck the ownership. Like I'm out. I'm never playing another game in a Packers uniform after the season. And now it's like, he's saying that, He's not sure. He does, doesn't want to be part of a, a rebuild, but he's basically leaving the door open and coming back. Yeah. I, I think he's going to – I actually do think he's going to end up in Denver. I am praying that he's not in Green Bay. I'm, I want him out. The I reason mean, I thought he was going to be in Denver is that Shailene Woodley that he was about – that he's engaged to, she has a house there. Um. So I figured not only does that make sense, but the Broncos just dumped a bunch of money into their receivers. They paid Tim Patrick. They paid Cortland Sutton. They have Javante Williams. They have a decent defense. Noah Fant. Like, yeah. I um, mean, they, all, all the pieces are there. Well, did you see they were interviewing Nathaniel Hackett, the OC? Yeah, I did. But now yeah. there's like supposedly Rodgers is like on the rocks with this Shailene Woodley. Guy literally can't can't hold a relationship it's <laughs> there's it's a insane. common denominator to all that with his fiancés with his family right anyway. well it's it's not official or being 100 percent reported but it's looks like that nathaniel hackett might be the next coach in in denver yeah i mean if that's the case then i don't know i i, I said in the middle of the season it would have been a a very smart move to place a, a little future on the Broncos for the Super Bowl next year. Man, where where can you even do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you think if there was one team you wanted him to go to, do you think it'd be the Steelers? Uh it's a pretty hot topic on the Steelers streets. I would love to have him for a year, just see what he could fucking do with the receivers that the Steelers have. The defense is pretty good. They could probably make a good run with them. But, you'd like them for you'd like that triumph for one year only. Well, he's not going to sign more than a year contract. You think he'll probably do the Brady? Yeah, like a Brady two or special. three year. Two years, fifty million. All right, I'll take him for two years then. That's fine. Two years, fifty million. 
get a Jesus. menu let fucking you, the Steelers still have Dwayne Haskins, who's younger than fucking. No, don't, don't, no. Listen, dude, he's a he's number or a fucking first round overall pick. And someone mutes him. No, <laughs> I I do the muting. You let him play behind first fucking Ben and then Rogers for two years, learn a thing or two. Oh, you're <laughs> you're saying, <laughs> you know what? Just keep sitting him. Yeah, I was gonna say just, and then who's he gonna play behind next? Yeah. He, is li- he is literally just a backup. <laughs> He's only 23, dude. Two but he's not years. even the backup. He's the third string. Mason Rudolph was the backup. No, well, putting... He will be the backup. Where's Mason Rudolph going? Well, yeah, Mason's probably going to be the starter next year is what I'm saying. Oh, God, no. You cannot go into a season and expect to win. Don't tell me that, bro. I know that. And have Mason Rudolph. <laughs> I know we that. Have, we have all the faith in the world in Mason. No, that's no. another name you don't win with. Don't win with head coach's name, Kellen. And quarterbacks named Mason. Seen a lot of people on Steelers Twitter calling for Mitch Trubisky. I've seen that too. I w- I don't think that's a bad move. I think I'm, the Steelers are we're way better team this year if uh, Mitch is out. <clears throat> Mitch is their quarterback. I'm a I Marcus actually Mariota do too. guy. I want got a nice little out. option with Mitch too. Um, I, I mean, hate RPO to say is it. perfect for Mitch or Mariota. Go ahead, sorry. I hate to say it, but if Rodgers went to Denver. I almost feel like I wouldn't mind seeing them do well. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't hate Roger specifically. I hate. I just, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've learned, I've learned to hate him over the past 15 years or whatever, but he was in a different team and not, he's in the AFC and not in the Bears division. I mean, that's the plus side is he's definitely not going to be in the NFC if he's not with the Packers. Right. No way. I have my, uh, my Peyton Manning Broncos jersey. I have to get an Aaron Rodgers one to fit. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Yeah. Family of jerseys. He would just uh, fit right in there with his scraggly ass hair. And his like, I don't know. Yeah. His fucking hippie vibes and yep. shitty beard. <laughs> Scrawny. <laughs> Weed. I don't know. I don't know what else. <laughs> I, got there. I was just going to let you keep riffing there. Yeah. Craft beer. Sore toes. Beanie. You're saying words at this point. Single. Sore toes. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, sore toes from hiking. I don't know. High. Cries, cries when he has sex. Has to have sex with the white top. Hates his family. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, am I describing uh, Aaron Rodgers or Flossie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if Flossie knows we do a pod. All right. <laughs> Let's... uh. What do we got here? Do you want to move on to some gambling picks before we get into starting five? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm Tell me where Max lies, there. dude. All right. So this past weekend, me and Max both went one and two, and Ty went two and one. So, Max, you are now – Oh, you are – you need a fucking miracle, my man. <laughs> I thought for sure I was eliminated by now, to be honest. So you would need to go six and oh. Well, yeah, you need to go six and oh. And Ty, we need to go like 0 and 6 or 0 5, at least 0 5 and 1. Okay. We could do that. <laughs> we, we could do that. So you pretty Especially. much just are going to be taking the opposite of whatever Psalm takes then <laughs> and pray you just get hot and he gets. But hot. I've been doing it and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like. Yeah, so you're definitely eliminated right. from reaching me, which is, which is great. Um, it lasts, so I get to go last. All right. I'll go first. I'm going – so we're not going to do uh, favorites, underdogs, and totals. We're going to do Just three, bets. three bets that are minus 120 or closer. Yep. yep. So, be, so whatever you want. Uh, my first one is going to be Jamar Chase over 82 and a half passing yards or receiving yards. Okay. It's a good one. I feel like he's always going over. I'll go the opposite of that. I'm going Tyreek Hill over 76 and a half. I don't think that would be – the opposite would be you taking the under. Yeah, yeah. Because both these bats can side of the ball. Okay. Tyreek Hill what? Over 76 and a half. And that, what are the odds on that? I don't even remember. We kind of so, need to know. We'll, we'll say it's within. It probably is, though. Look it up. And if it's – Ty, look it up while we're yeah. going again. All right, Maxi Pad, what do you got? Um, I kind of just want to stick with the the spreads here first. I'm gonna have to go Bengals Chiefs over fifty four and a half. I 
I like that one. Uh, minus 114. All right, you're good. All right, my next one is Niners plus three. I think I think you could sprinkle a little bit on the money line for the Niners here, to be honest. My humble opinion. Okay. I'm taking, my humble opinion. I'm taking all player props, by the way. Hope that's cool. I don't give a shit. Going Who? OBJ over 49 and a half receiving. His is only at 49 and a half. Sure is, bud. Jesus. That's a steal. I don't even think he hit that last this past game. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. I have no nice. idea though. Um I'm gonna go Joe Mixon over 60 and a half rushing yards. Ooh. Hate that guy. We're an anti Joe Mixon podcast. What yeah, was this? 60 and a half. 60.5 rushing. Yeah, did you see him knock that girl out in college? Yeah. And he was, I think he was like kicking her. I don't know. I don't know. I'm high. Ray Ray said ass. Yeah. It's my turn. Yeah. No, no. Um, oh, shit. Is it my turn? Yeah. Oh, my bad. I'm going Chiefs Bengals over 54 and a half. Sup. Damn. That's a That's lot me. of fucking points. Buddy. Welcome to the party. All right. I'm going Mahomes over 285 and a half passing. <laughs> Ty, you're like an anomaly of a person. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean, so I'm going to take it as a compliment. <laughs> I said Chiefs Bengals over 54. You go, ooh, that's a lot of points. And then you instantly <laughs> take the Mahomes passing yards over. Yeah, so, dude, he did that in a half. What if they fucking blow their asses out? All right, so what was the total? I said 285 and a half. It's not that much. It's three touchdowns, dude. Easy. <laughs> if they're throwing the ball the whole fucking time. <laughs> All right, man. Shit, man. I'm going to go Tyler Boyd over 35 and a half yards. That's a good one. I actually saw that one too. I like that. All he right. Likes it. So Max, again, you need a miracle here. You need to be rooting against all of ties while rooting for all of yours. He took some layups too. Layups. Like what? Why don't you, why don't you challenge yourself? Me. Why don't you challenge yourself a little bit, partner? Show me. With what? <laughs> An over? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's easier than a player. Why don't you take prop? the Patrick Mahomes under something? Because <laughs> well, I, I have a strong feeling it's going to be over. I like it. No, Ty, don't don't cave. He's got a. He's the one who's nervous. He's got a yug a gallon yeah, of milk dude's in an hour. Nervous, dude. I love milk. <laughs> you know I'll come what? down to your place and record with you. I had a glass of milk with some Oreos yesterday, and it was fucking fantastic. You know what's the worst is I'm pretty sure I'm lactose intolerant. So if I had to chug a a gallon of milk, I would have been just. That's why you really turned on the, the Jets for this. For this, <laughs> I would have been this segment of the pod. Yeah, I really focused. I took I was smoking for the earlier portions. I took Adderall for this. <laughs> Tom, you look like can't lose. You look like a whole milk kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I thought. No, no, no. Now where I thought you were going with that. I'm a two per, <laughs> a two percent guy through and through, dude. Yes, yeah, so I didn't know where you were going with that, but I grew up on two percent chocolate, though, right? No. Oh, dude, nothing better than riding your bike to the local white hen. Just fucking getting a quart of chocolate milk and a donut. Best. White, what hen. A th- white hen, what a throwback. I know, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Age yourself. OG a bit. shit, bro. All right, let's get into the starting five here. So the starting five is going to be best, our most clutch performers of all time. Yeah, yes. are we just doing like one performance or play, like one just person? The- a player person so i i asked ty the same question and he said he couldn't do and it, it performances yeah i'm too dumb for that doesn't have to be somebody who's like had a bunch of clutch performances just like somebody who in a clutch situation any sport you would want that guy to take a shot for you or throw a pass whatever okay all right, it's the long-winded we're just basically going to name the best players of all time <laughs> no maybe all right yeah <laughs> All right, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. 
rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Always, always the scissors. And Literally I always scissors. Fly. So, <laughs> Tyler, you did scissors. I know. I, I was like, why are you cheering? No, I said, fuck. <laughs> Me and Kyle only know how to do scissors. Oh, you did paper last week. I thought you were going to outsmart yourself again. <laughs> I fucked it up this time. It's, it's natural instinct to go scissors. All right, Ty, I'll, you go second. I'll go last. Uh, start it off, Maxie. All right. I mean, this is no-brainer. Shy Sports Daily podcast, or Shy Sports Weekly, I apologize. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Thank you. That's fair. Not going to say anything else other than that. You can use your imagination. The first couple rounds, yeah, it's going to be – it'll be chalk. It'll be a lot of great players. But the later rounds, it's going to be a good one. It needs to be contentious. All right. I'm going to – yeah, I'm going to try to hit on every major sport. So, we'll see. It'll keep it interesting. Uh, I'm going to go Kobe, though, to start. Nice. The later Kobe. Round. I like R. that. Love All that. Right. I'm going Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he should have yeah. been the second pick. I mean, I mean Kobe, on. no disrespect to Kobe. I mean. All the disrespect legend. to Kobe. And then <laughs> I'm going uh, Adam Vinatieri. Oh, snap. A kicker? In the second round? A kicker? Fine, fine. No, no, I won't go. No, 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 no. I was gonna, I'll take him in the third then. No, you get, oh. you get Vinatieri. And you like it. I'm going Vinatieri. Are you kidding me? He's got two game-winning field goals. Damn. All right, Tom. Swing it back my way. <laughs> Bold ass pick. Um Bold ass HUD. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. Hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> I'm gonna say get wild something. in the second round too, just because I'm trying to hit different sports here. I'm gonna go uh Messi from the soccer wow. pitch. You ever heard of him? Heard of him. I hate yours already. Don't know anything about him. <laughs> Dude is good at soccer. That's what you need no, I, to know. Yeah, that's a good pick. Um, I'm glad this guy fell to me. I was hoping he would. Tiger Woods. Oh, oh that's, that's your guy. He is I mean, clutch. I think I won the draft, even if I don't make a pick for the rest of the way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, you're off to a good start. <laughs> um, I'll try and go with the multi-sport thing, too. I'm going to go Derek Jeter. Oh, you bitch. Yeah, you won. <laughs> there's no way Ty, there's no way Ty was gonna say Derek Jeter there. No. Did you want Jeter, not. Kyle? Yeah, I was going Jeter next. But I will uh stick to the Yankees and go Mariano Rivera. Oh, that's a good one. Look at you. That's a great one. Look at you. So look at Solomon his obscure picks with his <laughs> obscure orange hat. Being being obscure. If anything, it's more <laughs> obscure if I don't wear an orange hat. <laughs> All right. Clutch performers. This is a, you know, a variety of different ways here. I'm trying to think of more Chicago clutch performers. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I did two football. Yep. You got Brady and Vinatieri. I'm going to go John Lester. Nice. That's good. He, He's a good clutch performer. That's Chicago. Um, oh right, come on, uh, hockey guy. I know. I mean, I could go Kaner. I could go Taze. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm going to actually, you know what? I'm going Kane. Patrick Kane. He yeah. is an absolute stud when, it, when it's crunch time. Needed to be done. P I can't Kane. believe I didn't take him first. Yeah. I thought you might, quite honestly. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with hockey too, and I'm gonna go Sid the Kid, of course. Sid. Ooh. Ever heard of him? Never, not once. All right. You wanted Chicago, you're getting Chicago. Devin Hester. Oh. <laughs> Devin talk, Hester. Talk about obscure. And then man, what do I do with this last pick? So I've done Basketball, golf, baseball, football. Yep. That is correct. What other sports we got? Ping pong? <laughs> we got soccer, <laughs> dude. How about a hockey? Could do hockey. I mean, Jonathan Taze would be pretty vanilla, but 
Yeah. I think he has one career overtime goal in the playoffs. Are you going to be vanilla you about it? he's not clutch? No, I'm just – I was. I mean, it sounds like that's what you're saying. No, I'm kinda, just, it kind of is. I'm giving you numbers. Kind of sounds you numbers. like what you're saying. I'll never you explain what you were trying to say there. Oh. I think providing facts for my co-host. <laughs> Such a nice guy, this one. This this guy. This I guy. hope he. I hope he hears this this part of the show somehow. Jonathan, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I would Very love sorry. to have you on. Thank you. I'm I'm filibusting right now. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Max, Max is great at filibustering. Um shit. The <laughs> All right. This is relevant to this year. Um DeMar DeRozan. Oh, that's that's a very good one. That is very relevant too. Very timely. Congrats. Yep. Oh, okay. I need a football player or something here. Um All right. I'm gonna go. Probably go Peyton Manning. Seems like the obvious choice here for football. You had such a boring ass draft. <laughs> Mariano Rivera, dude, go f- go fucking crank yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my my boring as shit too. I'm my last pick. I'm going Robbie Gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's actually you got really t- good. you got two kickers. Kyle picked two kickers. I probably I pick maybe the two most clutch kickers <laughs> of our generation. That is hilarious that you pick two kickers <laughs> with John Lester, Patrick. King. What a group! Not gonna knock you though. I mean, <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna ask you this: Imagine being in the club with Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and Derek Jeter. If you had to get dinner with a, one of these groups, which one is it? That's the real fucking question. Oh, Max's group? Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's, there's gonna be close. strippers and gambling. It's pretty easy. <laughs> and Derek Jeter. <laughs> yeah, Kyle's group to, will just have Brady kissing his kid on the mouth. I have to drop the line from the Tiger documentary when um, Tiger Woods started hanging out with Jordan and um, maybe Barkley was the other guy. Mm-hmm. They were, they'd be going out in Vegas and Tiger was shy and nervous. So he's like, what? I mean, I don't, what do you guys say to these girls? Like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to talk to them. And Michael Jordan goes, just tell him you're Tiger fucking Woods. <laughs> <laughs> is that, wait, that's in his book or his doc? Yeah. He's like, what should I tell these girls? He's like, tell him you're Tiger fucking Woods. Oh, I'm going to find <laughs> that. I'm going to post that. I'm going to reply to it. With, to the tweet tomorrow with that. That's awesome. Okay, what are some uh, honorable mentions you got? I was thinking David Ortiz. <sighs> yeah, that's uh... a good one. I like Tracy McGrady. I don't even know how clutch he actually was, but he was just silky. I mean, he had that one game where he had like 13 points yeah. in 33 seconds. Besides that, no idea. Um, you know, it was one that's probably very underrated, who's – you could arguably say he's like the most clutch player of all time, is Edgar Renteria. Really? <laughs> so he had the game-winning hit in the 97 World Series walk-off, and he won another World Series MVP. Damn. Hmm. I mean, if you do that in two World Series, that's unbelievable. I mean, Manny Ramirez was pretty clutch. Yeah. Albert Pujols. I got to imagine Tony Gwynn was pretty clutch. That dude was always on base. Yeah. And we should have had a, like a... I, I, I absolutely love how none of us said LeBron James. <laughs> I know. I, there's no <laughs> fucking shot I was saying him. You couldn't have paid me to say LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron we should, James. We could do like the LeBron James Memorial clutch perform the anti LeBron James. Reggie Miller is a good one. Yeah, that's good. Never won a feel- never won a big uh, or won, never won a championship. Like Dan Marino, I was gonna say him never won a championship. Why do I feel like Robert Ory hit a bunch of big threes? Oh, big shot Rob. Yeah, you could probably argue Ray Allen. Yeah, you could. No one's gonna argue you if you say Ray Allen <laughs> or Paul Pierce. Quite frankly, yeah, Paul Pierce. Paul the truth. Pierce got carried off the court because he had a poo. Hey, we've all fucking been. At there, least dude. he had to poo. I guarantee you, when LeBron got carried off the course that one time when he was making that face, he did not have to poo. The course or the court? The court. Did you I say think course? I never got carried out of my cubicle because I had to take a shit at work? <laughs> it happens to the best of us, dude. It was like Janice from HR. <laughs> like, you can't shit here. You and it, it was Janice here. from HR McGrory. <laughs> if we could recreate that as a scene, that would be incredible. 
Uh, so I'm like in a, a shirt and tie, and he's just grimacing as they just carry limp him. legs getting dragged out of the office. <laughs> just a shirt that's like a it's his dad's dress shirt, just way too big out of him. <laughs> he's got Dance that hat way on too baggy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that shit on and those gigantic leg. headphones. <laughs> Sorry, you're just selling insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my last stand. I promise you that. I've got a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, let's wrap it up. Any more uh, honorable mentions we got? No. That's, that's about all I got. Who's, what's your Super Bowl prediction? Oh, Madison Bumgarner. That was my last mount. honorable mention. Oh, that's a good one. Super Bowl prediction, I'm going uh, Chiefs. Uh, Niners, Chiefs Niners. Ooh, that'd be a fun one. There's, re- I mean, you really can't go wrong. Um, However, so the Rams have lost six times in a row to the Chiefs, or to, pardon me, six times in a row to the Niners. Six in a row. Yeah, it's hard to beat a team seven times, but yeah. I think they're going to. Kyle right. Shanahan's never lost to Sean McVay. I'm going Chiefs Rams for guys. sure, in the, or at least in the last, last six meetings. You're going Chiefs Rams. Yeah. I mean, no matter what matchup we get, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm the, these are the weekends. Like, I, I know I took Niners plus three, but I won't bet uh, the total. I'll just do, like, an over-under of props these next for the rest of the season. It's just I don't want to – I don't know. I just like – it's. <laughs> I just love football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Bengals-Rams. Oh, shit. You think the Bengals are going to pull it out? Yeah, I think so. Hey, the Bengals pull out, but I don't. There he is with that orange head. On that note, thank you for listening to the Shy Sports Weekly podcast. We'll see you next week. Best one yet.